the Irondequoit Shopping Mall in Irondequoit, New York. The 90s, the mall opening weekend, flourishing with people, thousands of shoppers, a happy time, lots of places to eat, many children having fun, people shopping and enjoying life. This was the heyday of the modern American shopping mall when malls were abound and everybody was just having a good time. But then something happened. People stopped going to malls. Online shoppers started taking people away from the malls. More malls popped up, more malls couldn't compete. Crime, different things that contributed to the demise of the American shopping mall. And here we are in 2017 as malls are dying at an alarming rate. This is me, Anthony, with Aces and Ventures. Welcome back to the second part of my documentary on the Irondequoit Mall, my favorite dead mall in existence. These are the happy times. Let's go through the history from the beginning to the end. Join me as we go back in time and figure out just exactly what happened to this beautiful mall. In June of 1985, well-known mall developer Wilmerite Properties first announced plans for the Irondequoit Mall. And by May 1988, the first three anchor stores were confirmed, Sears, JCPenney, and Sibley's, which later became Kaufman's shortly after opening. The mall opened in March 1990 with approximately 110 stores and had an estimated 80,000 customers in its first weekend of business. McCurdy's opened as a fourth anchor store in 1992, but closed after only two years in business and later became the location of a Bonton. Although initially successful, the Irondequoit Mall began to lose tenants when two other regional malls, also owned by Wilmerite, the mall at Grease Ridge, created by connecting adjacent malls, Grease Town Mall and Long Ridge Mall to each other, and Eastview Mall, were renovated and expanded, drawing shoppers away from Irondequoit Mall. By year 2000, the mall was a rumored source of crime that same year. J.C. Penney closed its doors in 2003 due to declining sales. Developer Adam Burson bought the mall in 2005, at which point it was 70% vacant. Under Burson's ownership, the mall was renamed to the Medley Center, and actually a little-known fact is that a third name, the Lake Ridge Center, was actually planned but never used. Stephen Berry's opened a store in the former J.C. Penney's location, and later that year, Target also opened a new location to the adjacent of the property. Despite these additions, the mall continued to lose inline tenants, including Ruby Tuesday, Aeropostal, Subway, The Limited, Victoria's Secret, and Walden Books. In 2007, Burson Properties was purchased by Scott R. Congel, a former principal with the Pyramid Companies of Syracuse. The sale triggered speculation that the half-empty mall may be developed into a mixed-use property. Congel announced ambitious plans for redeveloping the property, a 420-room hotel, a 330 condominium unit, and a 16-screen movie theater would be part of the project, as well as retail, restaurant, and office space, and an underground parking garage. Before any work on redevelopment began, existing tenants began to leave. Bonton closed in late 2007, and Stephen Berry's closed in 2008. With the exception of Sears and Macy's, stores anchoring either end of the mall, the remaining tenants were all closed in January 2009. Hey everyone, this is Anthony with Aces Adventures and hope you enjoyed that uh, information on the uh, Irondequoit Mall, aka Medley Center, aka the unused name of Lake Ridge Center, which I found pretty fascinating and just uh, found that out recently. Uh, I'm going to do some commentary here and talk a little bit about, about what you're seeing and uh, just as usual give you an update on what's going on with Aces Adventures. Um, 
this video, as I had mentioned, I held out on putting out for a little bit. Uh, there was a, a couple that was arrested for trespassing and accused of damaging the mall. However, I will tell you publicly on record here that um, I know those people through a friend of a friend of a friend, and they were not the one that damaged the mall. Uh, it was most likely some locals that vandalized the mall. So those two people that you hear about that do nothing wrong, they were just in there taking photographs. So don't believe what you hear in the media. Those people were just uh, urban explorers that were just... Um, trespassing at worst, which we all do technically to see these malls. So those are good people. So whatever you hear, don't believe it. Um, unfortunately, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming some locals just smashed out some windows. Um, it's unfortunate people have to do that. So this mall is in beautiful shape. And that's the one of the most appealing things about this mall. It is close to where you know I reside in New York. Um, and like I said, it's just this mall is it's like 1990 just frozen in time you know you've got storefronts that have been there since the beginning you've got um, signage you've got just, just it just feels like 1990 all over again this is the quintessential dead mall in the country and in my opinion the coolest dead mall left in the country uh, this mall has sat vacant since 2009 of course the fledgling anchors just recently finally closed Sears uh, the, the ladder and Macy's uh, a couple years ago. So this mall is completely abandoned. Uh, the guy, uh, Angelo Ingracia, a local Rochester uh, developer who has had a very great track record and I've heard is a pretty good person, um, bought this mall for a dollar at a sheriff's sale or auction or whatever. And supposedly has plans for the mall, but I don't know if this is just maybe a bigger project than he's taken on because it's been sitting there um, for a while. And the mall is in pretty good shape, but at the same time, uh, a lot of what you don't see under the surface is this mall is actually in extreme trouble uh, from a water standpoint. There is uh, significant water damage to some of the interior storefronts. You're going to see here in a second uh, after we pass through this Foot Locker store here that one of the salons, I was in there uh, on a day when it had recently rained or snowed, I don't exactly remember, and it just sounds like a faucet is running inside the mall and that is not good news um, for any mall or any property so I don't know I don't know what's gonna happen I, I really don't want to say this but in my heart my gut tells me that they're probably just gonna have to demolish this mall because like I said there is significant water damage in several locations um, but you never know I mean maybe they can just fix that those interior stores because the interior of the mall is in is in pretty good shape I'd say 90% of the mall is uh, is pretty much intact. There's a couple places where there are um, some chipped away tiles and uh, some of the foundation needs a little bit of work, but overall it looked a little like me was in good shape. So listen to this here. That's crazy. You can just hear the water dripping, how immense uh, the water is there in that clip there. Uh, we're passing now through an old cell phone store, and this is this is what's so amazing about this mall. I mean, look at the sign. I mean, some of this stuff has not been touched in years. Look at these cell phones. This has got to be from at least 2000 or, or earlier, uh, based on what I remember about you know uh, cell phone technology. This is just a gem. It's a relic. It's this stuff does not exist anymore. You know, these malls are dying, and they're they're tearing all these places down, and it sucks for lack of a better word so and to uh, elaborate a little more on the water damage that I was mentioning in February of uh, 2014 Burson Properties who owned the mall uh, at the time was cited for a series of code violations after pipes from the property sprinkler system burst inside the vacant mall flooding out some floors and sending water spewing out into the parking lots inspectors found that the interior of the building was not heated and the burst pipes had caused significant damage Earlier that month, the town of Irondequoit, the East Irondequoit Central School District, and the County of Monroe Industrial Development Agency gave owner Scott Congal a May 1, 2014 deadline to make good on a series of missed payments, some dating back to as far as 2009. And then to elaborate on the purchase history again, uh, Congal said that he needed time to renegotiate the terms of the agreement in order to secure financing for his redevelopment project. And on January 21, 2016, the Medley Center was sold at a public auction held by Monroe County. Uh, it was sold to the only bidder, businessman Angelo Ingracia, purchased a vacant building for $100,000, so it wasn't a dollar by mistake, which includes the nine adjoining parcels.
So in closing here, as this tour is wrapping up, uh, I want to thank all of you so much for the support. I appreciate every one of you. Uh, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Aces Adventures One. Follow my co-producer Nick at Skinny Jeans S K I N N Y G E N E S. Uh, there is much more coming. Like I said, we've got many more malls coming for the spring. Uh, please, again, not to harp, check out our Patreon page. I'm going to put a link in the description below. The Patreon page um, is a donation site that we uh, use all that money to fund our future explorations. We have a plan to go out west. Um, there's actually a Montgomery Ward store still standing in California we want to get to see. So if you enjoy our work and uh, want to continue to help continue the channel grow, uh, feel free to help us out with the Patreon page to get those uh, efforts going for the spring. So thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. I truly appreciate your support. Um, I, like I said, as, as I always say, I do this for you guys. Uh, I want you guys to see these malls. I will document every dead mall in the country that I can physically get to. So in closing here, you're going to see another little timeline piece about the history of the Medley Center from the groundbreaking ceremony. This is Anthony with Aces Adventures. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, everybody have a great weekend. Uh, enjoy the Super Bowl and uh, take care. We'll be back shortly with the Fairgon Square Mall in just a, sh uh, sh a few short weeks. So take care, guys. Bye-bye. There was nothing here, just dirt. Officials broke ground on this parcel of dirt in the town of Aranda quite 10 years ago this week. And two years later, a vision became a reality, Arundacoit Mall. I was born and raised in uh, Arundacoit, and we didn't have anything around here. So for us, it's been fantastic, and it's you know supplied all my needs. But developing a complex as large as the Arundacoit Mall also lends itself to creating certain problems. And one problem that has recently drawn a lot of attention here is that of crime. There's a lot of breaking on the cars. Or it's, a, it's a modern shopping facility, and those will attract people who don't want to pay for stuff. The Rondacoit Mall should have a bright future. This despite a recent slew of store closings. Rondacoit is now at about 80% occupancy, the lowest of the region's four major malls. Town officials call the move a big boost for the local economy, a $4 million development snuggled in the corner lot of a Rondacoit Mall. Here, the Theraldson Corporation will build an IHOP restaurant and a 70-room Holiday Inn Express the town's first hotel in 60 years. Friday night at Arondequoit Mall. The shoppers are few and far between. Even Santa isn't filling many orders. Everybody wants different different things. They're all tired of the same stuff. It's, every mall is practically the same. Something different is exactly what's in store for Arondequoit. Wilmerite decided to sell off the troubled mall. Wilmerite also owns Grease Ridge, Marketplace, and Eastview Malls. To some, it's no surprise, but to shoppers, the news the Arondequoit Mall is up for sale again is disappointing. It's discouraging when this mall was so great five, ten years ago, and now it's nothing. 2005 brought a new beginning for the Arondequoit Mall. Thanks to huge tax breaks from the town and the school district, developer Adam Burson paid $5 million for the property, which was 85% vacant when the deal went through in March. What I can tell you is we have a tremendous number of tenants that are very interested. And everybody's looking forward now. When I first bought the property, people look backwards. But while some are feeling optimistic, others will undoubtedly focus on the empty stores that are still here. To them, Burson says, be patient. He's trying to turn around 10 years of history. Shoppers are responding to the news that the Medley Center has been sold once again. The buyer, Scott Congel, a mall developer with Syracuse-based Pyramid Companies. Pyramid also owns the Carousel Center in Syracuse, the Galleria in Buffalo, and several other malls.